Hello everyone and welcome to this new Substance live stream. I am Vincent Go and I'm going to be your host tonight with some special guests of some insiders uh, from the Substance Source team mostly. But before uh, to, uh, to start uh, presenting then, we are going to watch a small video that we just published uh, today on YouTube. Hi again, I hope you are hearing us. We had a, a, a sound problem, I think it's, it's fine now. Um, so I have some special, special invitees tonight. Uh, I am here with uh, Nicolas Polak, who is the head of content on uh, for Substance Source. Hey Nicolas, how's it going? Hi everyone, nice to be here. We are also with Anaïs uh, Lamelière, who is a color material and finish designer for Substance and the Substance Source team. Hey, Anaïs. Hi, everybody. And finally, we are also with uh, Guillaume Mayer, who is technical artist uh, at Substance by Adobe. Hey, Guillaume, how is it going? Ah, Guillaume, you have your mic. Uh... Yeah, but I think he's super happy to be here. <laughs> are you? Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm super happy to be here. Yeah, you can see that he's more artist than technical. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are here today, uh, of course, to talk a bit about this video and also about uh, color material and finish uh, design with Substance Tools. Okay, perfect. I am sharing more right now. Can you see my screen? Yes, you have to switch into uh, presentation mode. Yes, should be, should be now. Can yes, you, you can go. Perfect. Great, thank you very much, Vincent. So before I, um, we jump into the demo, um, I would like to set the scene and the context and of course, introduce a little bit more myself. So. I am obviously Nicholas, and um, I'm head of content for uh, 3DI at Adobe, but I'm also an industrial designer. And I worked for 10 years in several companies, such as Nokia, Acer, and Microsoft, where I created consumer products from the drawing board to um, uh, all the way to the manufacturing. I am also a material specialist, what you could call a color and material designer. Um, I'm specifically interested in researching and developing materials, technologies that shape our day-to-day -day product, from how they are made, their performances, their overall qualities, to meet with the functional and visual requirements of the product to be built. 
With this collaboration with Ronan and the videos you just uh, seen, I wanted to inspire CMF designers to work in digital space using substance source material in order to highlight the creative opportunities digital color material design offers by showcasing each shape steps of the project of the process in digital from creation all the way to visualization um, uh, for retail and e-commerce context and finally to showcase what benefits the combination of designers and 3d artists could bring to the process moving forward uh, beyond the single product design we took the challenge together with Anais and Ronan uh, to create an entire product lineup in order to illustrate a wide palette of materials. CMF designers' um, work is not limited to picking references and suppliers' catalog. Our job is really to design colors and materials for the qualities and performances they will convey to the product. Designers need to experiment with the various visual properties of materials. It is a constant experimentation of combination of colors and surface aspects across a, a given substrate. The same color will not look the same uh, on a slick and glossy surface than it would be on a rough or grainy, nor will we consider the material the same way from an emotional standpoint. This is why CMF designers need to preview materials in a photorealistic way so that they can validate and moreover make others see what materials can express, express and do to the product. This is why CMF designers are very much connected to the physical world. However, in my career, I often was frustrated by the lack of tools available to show clearly my design intention earlier in the process. The substrates of the, um, uh, the color and the surface finish are because of this design quite separately from each other. And thus the process really fully rely on prototyping iteration loops to find the right combination. Designer needs creative freedom to explore these combinations in order to save time and money by being more accurate on their expectation. Visualizing materials in a photorealistic way is an opportunity in digital to first make more educated design decision based on tangible visual options to be understood clearly by engineering and suppliers about what it is exactly you are looking for in terms of effect and the look and feel of material and consequently make partners and clients buy into the idea before spending money in, pro in prototyping and showing on one side a 10 by 10 centimeter sample and the other one um, um, a, a wide um, uh, view of the product to be built is a clear limitation to achieving that goal. Building an extended physical samples library is a long and costly process in the physical world. Chances are the materials with the specific colors and glass level combination that you need today um, uh, is not, is, will be missing from this catalog. Wouldn't it be nice to have the possibility to visualize in advance what these samples would look like in the color and the finish you need. Parametric digital materials allow you to preview the material in the color and the finishing um, 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 effect you want without having to wait for a sample to be fabricated, saving thus a lot of money and time, in addition, of course, to be uh, more environmentally friendly. And parametric material um, helps you to achieve exactly that. Um, it offers the possibility to explore quickly and effortlessly an infinity of photorealistic CMF variation in digital. Materials are fully customizable. They come with parameters that enable to control selectively several aspects of the matter. And you can even um, model um, them to behave according to a specific um, uh, manufacturing process. And these are just a few examples of the materials you can find on Substance Source because we already started to design the digital twin uh, material library you were thinking about with Substance Source, so you don't have to make it yourself. You simply have to pick and tweak the materials to create your own private library of finishes adapted to your own product industry in much the same way you would experiment in a real workshop.
A unified digital library will enable designers to gain powerful control over the material across the entire design process. I do believe that the collaboration between 3D artists and uh, designers is a pivotal enabler for the next industry model, which requires shorter cycles from creation to distribution on e-commerce channels. From the early specification with what you can see here on the screen, a virtual digital bill of materials with embedded presets variation of all the colorways that the designer will define embedded into a single digital container to the generation of numerous images required for uh, to feed an e-commerce platform, of course, to be created by the, uh, a, a 3D artist. This will basically save time uh, to all the key contributors to the projects um, that will be able to benefit from digital materials. CMF designers will definitely have a full control over specification and 3D artists will just have to drag and drop the materials to have the desired look and feel, um, but more on that later um, in the demo. And so basically what we are going to show you today is the benefits of substance um, um, into the CMF design world um, to design products in the tiniest detail, such as creating an infinity of material colorways in an effortless manner to create procedurally and parametrically uh, patterns to um, test very quickly um, uh, an infinity of variation to the holes and venting um, uh, that you might need on the product. In, and, and also to add all the small details um, that you may need, such as the logos and the imprints on, on the products and iterate very quickly between several options of it. And finally, the, the digital parametric materials libraries um, beyond um, only the single product will enable CMF designers to oversee the design of the product design of a product tier um, range and all the way to the color palette to the full product portfolio in terms of uh, creating a unified um, a variation of uh, materials and finishes. And this is basically what Anais and Guillaume will now showcase during their demo using Substance toolsets. Thank you very much, Nicolas. If you can stop sharing your screen. Just as a, remind, a reminder, sorry, we have um, uh, we have Pidu and uh, Casimir in the chat. So in case you have any question about uh, Substance Tools or uh, whatever question, you can uh, directly ask uh, it to the chat and uh, we are going to do uh, an in-depth Q&A at the end of the, the video. Uh, now we had like some great images. We are going to... Um, to discover a bit more with uh, Anaïs Lamelière, um, who is a CMF designer at uh, Substance by Adobe. Hey, Anaïs, it's your turn to, to speak. Hi. I guess you can share your screen as well. Yes. And let's hope it doesn't crash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Great. <laughs> So hi everybody, my name is Anaïs Lamelière. I am CMF designer for 3DI at Adobe, specifically in the Substance Source team. As a CMF designer, my role is designing and specifying colors, materials, and finishes to support the 3D production, like parametric materials and Substance Source, and also to support the awareness of material design opportunity across industry. So you will find our CMF articles on Substance Source included inside the seven video boards from a collaboration with Ronan Mahon, Nicola Polak, and myself. So today, uh, the idea is to illustrate benefits CMF designer would gain in utilizing Substance Source materials and Substance Alchemist to be the digital twin of products. So before to start, I uh, just want to say that uh, I can understand it might be difficult or it might be impressive to discover a new digital tool. As a CMF designer, I had the habit to work directly with the matter and create my visual um, 2D tools. But thanks to 3D tools, my design process is really faster and smoother. And I use Substance Tools since one year and 
I appropriated them very, very quickly. So together we will follow the different steps of CMF process to design and visualize a fictional speaker designed by Nicola Polak. So first we will extract color materials, finishes and pattern information from the CMF mood board. Then we will create a material collection thanks to Substance Source. And to finish, we will use Substance Alchemist to drive material presets in order to create a full range, a full product range. So, so let's go. So to start, I already opened Substance Launcher. So just to remind you, the Substance Launcher is an application that helps manage the Substance Suite. So install the different software and access to Substance Source. So you, do, you just need to click on the tab Substance Source. As, as you can see, this is an ever-growing content library. Today, we have more than 5,000 materials where you can find high resolution and tweakable assets texturing. So now that my digital tools are open, we can move to the first step, extract, extract CMF information from a mood board made previously. So this is my mood board. Just a mood board is a conceptual aid created to represent an aspirations as well as the look of the, of the products thanks to images and samples. From my point of view, the speaker reminded me a miniature of brutalist architecture form in concrete, but also the chair one designed by Constantin Wilczysz um, with a solid base in concrete and a lighter seat in plastic. So inspired by this design, I extracted a brutalist color palette based on contrasted shades of gray. Then I also extracted a list of materials and finishes, which will serve as a basis for finding the digital equivalents in substance source. So we need an aluminum, a plastic, a fabric, a cast concrete, and a wall. When products are created with these materials selection in mind, there are certain elements designed to be permanent and certain elements designed to be flexible or upgradable through different CMF variation. Just to give you an example here, you have another version of the speaker inspired by megaliths. Just megaliths is the stone of red size like dolmen or mania. So the idea is to play with the blue of the sky and the gray of the stone. So when you add color, you can narrate another story. Here, you have a casual version made with wood and punctuated with metal in order to highlight the color. So, to choose a specific material on substance source, you just have to type a word on the search bar, for example, fabric. Substance is searching all the material linked to the word fabric. And you can now you can choose from all material available. So for the speaker, I will choose a chambre. So you just have to click on the icon Substance Alchemist, and the material is directly sent to the software. As a CMF designer, this is my my favorite 3D tools because I really enjoy to work with Substance Alchemist. The interface is very, very intuitive to modify and suit my personal preference to tweak a material. So on the right side, I can easily change the mesh to adapt my material to the shape. Here, this is a fabric, so I will choose the mesh close. Just like that. Then on the low part, this is my collection of material. So here you have my chambray fabric. And on the right side, this is the tweak panel. You can find the material and the embedded process. Now I will tweak my collection for the speaker. 
So I just want to say that what is interesting in the parametric material is the fact that you can tweak and adapt uh, the material to your CMF needs. So in order to help me, I have done a recap of my color palettes and their finishes. For example, in this fabric, I can pick the color directly on my mood board. Just, I need to click here, pick screen color and change the color. So now I have find the color that I like, click and it's over. Now I can change the rustness. So if you, I want to have something very glossy or something metallic, But, or I can have something very smooth with a soft touch. And I can do the same thing for the warp yarn, but also for the wave yarn. So I can change the color and add roughness. So now you can see that you have the wolf yarn with a matte finish and the weft yarn with a glossy finish or metallic finish. So thanks to Alchemist, I can choose my material, I can change the color and I can tweak the finish. So now my eyeset is over. So I just have to click on save a preset, give a name, for example, pink, pink fabric and save it. So now my preset is on my collection. So I will change my material and play with a concrete. So again, I will change the mesh. So I choose rounded cylinder because the shape of rounded cylinder is very close to the shape of the speaker. So as you can see, you can play, you can play again with the color. So I will add blue tones on this one. After I can play with the concrete, to have something very glossy or very matte. I can play with the imperfection on the surface. This one is very smooth and I add imperfection like that. So here, this is the smoothness. The pot density. And the contrast. So previously, I have done a variation of presets in order to show you the possibilities that offer a parametric material. This one, you have a very rough mat concrete. For this one, I play with the color and the contrast. And for this one, you have a very smooth version and a glossy version. So before to start my presentation, I want to show you how to tweak a pattern. Designing pattern of whole on the project can be a very complex exercise. So I choose a plastic to apply on the speaker. So again, I will change the mesh and choose rounded skew. Now you can play with the roughness, with the metallic again. So I want something glossy. Again, I will change the color. As you can see, you have more parameter because the material is, is complex. So we can change the pattern. So you have custom pattern, so you can download your old pattern or you can play with square pattern or round pattern. So for this one, I will choose square pattern. I can play with the blur. 
I will add random in order to add dynamism to the pattern. I can change the size of each square. And to finish, for example, if the top of your speaker is rounded, I can adapt the shapes. So this is my favorite parameters. It's just to give you an example of what is possible. So now our collection is over. So thanks to Substance Source and Substance Alchemy, I easily develop a common creative language with the 3D artist. So today it's Guillaume. So now I can send him my CMF brief and my CMF collection to build a digital twin of the speaker. So the design process open an infinite possibility to experiment, design, and compare virtual matter and colorways, not only on a simple product, but you can use this process on the entire lineup. Just a reminder, I show you just three materials, but there are more than 5,000 materials on Substance Source made by the team. So now you just have to get inspired. So I will let Guillaume show how to texture an object and show you the beneficial impact it could have on your CNF day to day. Thanks a lot. Just before to, to get uh, with Guillaume, we, we are going to take some questions uh, for, from the audience. Uh, as I told you, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to mention Substance by Adobe in the chat and they, they will pass uh, them to us. So uh, the first one uh, is for the video we saw at the beginning. Uh, we, did, we did with uh, Ronan Mahon, which, which, who actually is in the chat. So if you want to say hi to him, it's, uh, it's the right time. Um, but uh, how long uh, does it, did it take, more or less, to, to make this, uh, this video? And, and to fun. end, it took us um, uh, roughly three weeks. But this is, um, um, uh, this is including every single step and every iteration that we did, from the first drawing on a piece of paper to the modeling software to transfer that uh, into a tool for an ace to design the color palette, to design the materials, create all the iteration. And, and you can understand the amounts of, of variation that you want to create and experiment before finding the right one. This was the possibility we had to spend a lot of time doing that. And, um, and, 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 and of course, I'm, um, I'm, I'm taking into account the different iteration and the different reconstruction that were, had to be um, uh, created and made by Ronan to actually um, um, uh, design the video using the product and animating every shots. Perfect. And uh, yeah, actually, this is not uh, the first video we do with uh, Ronan. Uh, Anais and uh, Ronan has been, and you as well, and the Substance Source team ha have been collaborating a lot on, 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 on this video. So you can find them uh, on the, our YouTube channel, of course. And uh, we also, as you said, we, are, we also have almost 6,000 materials right now. I, I think, um, Nicolas, that we doubled almost in a year. Uh, for We just re released last week uh, more than 1,000 uh, ArcVis-related uh, yes. materials, no? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's the case. From the from beginning of, uh, of 2020, we nearly doubled the amount of materials and substance source. Um, uh, and our goal is to, is to offer a, a wide diversity of um, turnkey elements that you could um, uh, tweak and customize according to what you want. And, and the goal is to have uh, for every materials a unique set of parameters because everything on Substance Source is parametric. It is delivered in the Substance format and, um, and, and, and the graphs are, are, are available um, to, to download. So it's, it's really a, a starting point to you, uh, for you as a designer to to, to create your own variation that suits your, your specific needs. Um, and, um, and so the team is working very hard to, to actually add more materials cross industry um, uh, to enable any, any user to do that. Definitely, as you said, the, the fact that it's parametric means that you can tweak them the way you need for your specific project, which means that you can multiply 6,000 by a 
almost an infinite uh, amount of, of variations. So maybe it's time for Guillaume to show us some of his magic as well. Are you ready, Guillaume? Uh, yes, yes, I'm yeah. ready. Okay, so Guillaume, we, I, I let you uh, make your demo. Okay, so let me share my screen and okay. And so this is pretty much what we will see today. Um, this is my folder. Okay. And today, well, this is our um, suite of, uh, of uh, software. And today we've seen Substance Alchemist with uh, Anaïs and she tweaked some material and delivered me uh, the material for the, for the uh, speaker. And on my side, uh, Ronan Maon uh, gave me also this uh, a speaker, a large, large mesh, awesome model. Everything is done on the mesh. So it has some UVs uh, already. We will speak about uh, UVs uh, after in Painter, but it's pretty much ready to be paint. So what we will see today is Substance Painter. As uh, Anais uh, mentioned, Substance Alchemist and Substance Designer are uh, meant to create materials. Substance Painter is meant to apply material on a model. So let's open a blank uh, project from Substance Painter and start working on this uh, speaker large mesh. So as you, as you will uh, see, when you start to, uh, to work on a Substance Painter uh, project, you will have a mesh in your viewport like that. And you will have on the left, uh, on the right, a layer stack. And what we say a lot of time is that Substance Painter is like a Photoshop in 3D. Instead of having a 2D viewport over there or a 2D image, you will have a 3D model. And on this model, you can paint directly on the model with some layers. And if you uh, check the layer over there like that, you will see that we apply some color on this mesh. But also we applied other uh, type of materials, uh, maps or information like uh, height information, roughness information, et cetera, et cetera. So basically you apply everything to pick your materials here. And as you can see, you apply your material on the mesh directly and you can tile them. And this split view will allow you to, to see the UV space. This is uh, um, the thing that I told you before, this mesh has some UVs and the UVs are the, the translation in 2D of the mesh. So basically uh, it's like as we cut the mesh and flatten it, uh, flatten it on a 2D surface. So now we can apply images or textures to the images and they will translate through the UVs in 3D with the UV space. Pretty cool. Okay. So now what we can see is that dynamically in real time, we can apply material, modify them, et cetera, et cetera, and get through the process of texturing this uh, mesh. So what we, uh, I will do first, I will go to the folder that um, Anais gave me and I will drag and drop everything on my um, on my uh, viewport uh, window. So I'm selecting some of the some of the things over there. This one I want it to be a texture. This one is a logo, so I want also to be a texture. And all the other uh, SBSAR, so substance materials, uh, I will. Uh, gave them the base material uh, ID. And so then I can see that they are popping on my shelf over there. 
And with a simple drag and drop and with a control activate on, on the mesh, I can see that I can drag and drop this uh, material on some of the part of the model. I know that the climbing rope needs to go on the wire over there. Then I can tweak more and more and decrease the, the size of it. And I can go on the presets. And this is the preset Anais uh, told you uh, about before. I can just select the gray rope and Anais created this preset for me. So I don't need to tweak anymore the parameters over there. I know that this is the design intention that uh, Anais wants. So pretty great. With a document that I have that Anais gave me also, I can see where I need to apply the other uh, type of material. So I see that here I need to put the gray, uh, the tafla fabric. So this is the one. So I'm drag and dropping it. I'm changing this one to normal. I'm guessing the size like that. Yes, it's looking good. And also once something that uh, could be uh, useful is to activate some anti-aliasing stuff filter over there on the viewport. So it's more, uh, it's more defined in terms of, of shape. Um, what I can do, I need to put the cross brush metal over there like that. Oh, I almost forgot. I need to activate over there, the gray fabric. This is the, the preset that Anna is, uh, gave me. For the cross metal, I need to activate this one. And for this one, what I see is that uh, maybe uh, it's not really uh, well mapped on the, on, the, on the shape. So I can change the mapping. Uh, um, projection. And to do that, I will go over there and put like a planar projection like that. And what I can see now, I see some gizmo on the viewport and I can move them and I can also rotate them like that. Okay. And so now I can see that the, rota the, the, the mapping is well done. I just need maybe uh, to rotate to 90 degree the, okay, let's do that like that. Like that and maybe to 90 degree over there. So now the brush section is well done and I need to scale it a bit more. So I have like a better. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, let's go on this side. And actually also I will add another part where I want to be like uh, metallic with the same brush. So this is this will be the same material. I just uh, activated a color selection and picked the right part over there. So now we have two parts that have the same material. Um, I need to drag and drop the concrete over there, activate the gray concrete material and scale it a bit down like that. Fives look good. Maybe activate the normal instead of the heights. And we have like a lot of detail over there. And uh, lastly, I need to put the micro bead material over there. And I need to put the white soft touch plastic that created Anais for me. Okay, 
So now we have the rough shape of what we want. Everything is in place. So I will come down to the next um, slide. And I can see that um, Anaïs said to me to apply some text over there, also like a, a carved uh, concrete logo over there. So let's begin with, uh, with the logo. Um, to do that, I will create a new layer like that. And I can activate a red color just to see really well what I'm doing. Okay. And now I will use some, I will go into a full screen and I will use some um, layer, uh, some, some uh, mask. And like in Photoshop, you can mask your fill layers. So this is a fill layer that will uh, go over all the model, as you can see. And when you activate, for example, a black layer, it will occlude the, 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 the fill layer. And then you can paint on this layer to make appear the, the material. And if you type uh, click Alt, uh, left click Alt in the layer, you can visualize the layer you're uh, painting like that. And when you click, uh, left click on the on the fill layer, you can see what it's doing. Guillaume, yes. uh, in, in the chat, uh, someone is curious to know at which uh, resolution you are working right now. So I'm working at uh, 4K. Okay. So this is the maximum in the in the in the viewport uh, that you can uh, work to, uh, but you can uh, with but you can uh, export at eight K at the end. So uh, the double of the size of the size of this uh, texture. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm working on one texture set only. Okay, for all the perfect. Files. And so you know, uh, actually, you can uh, as uh, Guillaume mentioned, you can work at whatever resolution. At the end, you can change because it's non-destructive. It means that you can change the resolution whenever you want, and you won't lose any details. Yes, exactly. So to prove that, obviously, I can go to uh, like a really low resolution, for example, and I can paint uh, something like with a pretty low um, with a pretty low pixel uh, resolution, as you can see. And when I will go and update everything to uh, 4K, you will see that everything will sharpen. And as you can see also, all the information that I painted is fully uh, restored to uh, 4K. So whatever you're working on um, in terms of resolution, uh, you will change it at the end and everything will recompute with uh, all um, all the the, the vector uh, image that you or, or vector masks and the noises uh, will recompute to the a larger scale and not just uh, rescale uh, in terms of pixel but it will really recompute uh, all the the shapes for you um, so let's um, project some logos now so what we can uh, do is going on to this layer stack and on my brush setup i can go into the still scene uh, stencil and i can drag and drop this text uh, little text over there and what i can see on this uh, text uh, sbsar so uh, this is like a procedural uh, um, a mask i can type in some information I can change the the shape of my uh, of my font, and I can also change the the, the size of of the font like that. I can also activate on um, my viewport uh, my wireframe if I want to center well through the geometry uh, my logo like that, and I can just paint on it and uh, everywhere where my stencil is um, is uh, white, uh, I will see my logo like that. Okay, so I will put that down. And as you can see now, 
on the mask, I just painted this information. Now I, I will paint another, um, an, uh, when, uh, in another part over there, the, the logo. And for this one, I want to put just some, some height information. So I will put the white logo like that. And I will paint it over there. Okay, sounds pretty cool. Now I have my two logos well uh, put over there. And for this one, what I want to do is to emboss the, um, the, um, the concrete, so to carve it. To do that, I can deselect all my channels over there but I, I want to activate my height information. And as you can see, you can really like uh, play with this height information to um, emboss uh, or carve your logos. You can also activate some displacements on Painter. And as you can see now, I can really play with the geometry of my, um, of my uh, speaker to uh, carve the logo. Uh, with the with the intensity I want, so I can really visualize it. For this one, like said the the PDF, I need to put like a white value, pretty white, like that, and I can change also the roughness to have like more uh, a more shiny logo or more glossy logo with some selective coat on it like that. And I can even tweak to have like a metallic finish to it. And I can even uh, activate my normal and on the layer stack, put to a normal layer stack. And now it's completely um, uh, flat you know, on the surface. So you have like a really uh, glossy metallic finish over there. OK. So depending on the finish that you want, you can tweak easily now that you made the the the, the mask. Uh, you can easily tweak now your fill layer, the the information that you feed on your fill layer to uh, get to the right design. So I think this is the good design for the intention that uh, the design intention that gave me uh, gave um, Anais. Another thing that you can uh, do is. The, through the design, if the logo has changed, for example, and now you have a new logo like this one, for example, you can go onto the resource updater and change this resource with a new resource, like, um, let me see that uh, sounds. that and update it and normally it should work might be uh, and might be uh, messed on the on the on the, the import I didn't uh, put it through a texture so yeah I guess it's because be it's working. different kind of uh, resources uh, you have okay. like a, a bitmap on one side and a substance file on the other it has to be the same kind of, uh, of of resource, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, it might be that. So that's why it's not uh, it's not perfectly working. Sorry for that. Uh, but normally you you should be able to uh, with a bitmap, for example, to uh, change the resources accordingly uh, with the new design and the new uh, logos that uh, you receive. Let's finish our design really quickly. So we will drag and drop a new text over there. And for this one, I think I need to put like a play. Yes, this is a play logo with two arrows. And then I need to put a complete, a complete text over there. So let's do that. We're going to put play over there, adapt the size of it, and just paint it on the right place. Here we will put a hero like that. 
Okay. And an arrow like that on the other one. Like that, perfect. So this is great. And for the last touch, I need to go and copy this thing and put it over there like that and tweak the font size, just put, correct that and like that, perfect. Yep. And I can align with shift key to have like a perfectly aligned viewport. So now I know that I'm really precise. Oh, I messed up with that, okay. Like that. And as I can, uh, as I told you, you can activate the wireframe if you want really to align it through uh, uh, with this wireframe like that and just paint it over there. And yes, that's it. So now, as you can see, I completed my mask over there. And this uh, material now can be tweaked, uh, whatever, with whatever material I want. So now I can put any finish I want. Uh, so this is pretty much it for uh, the texturing part. As you can see, all my layers are over there. So I can tweak a lot of different uh, aspects of it. If um, Anais come back to me and say, uh, listen, I think that uh, we might uh, need to change uh, the, the fabric part to like a more darker color. I can really easily tweak directly uh, in Painter the, the, the presets like that. And in no time, I have like the, the good uh, results. And really quickly, you can send back a really good um, uh, um, renders with, uh, with uh, iRay. For example, if you want to do like a quick render, uh, you can do it uh, with iRay like that. Uh, so it's, it, the the model will will appear um, and IRA will uh, will render pretty fast uh, your your models. So let's see. I it think really, it generally takes a few seconds just to warm up and then it goes. Yeah, I think also it might be because I I subdivide uh, the 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 model a lot, so that's that's why. So actually, in IRA you can change a lot of uh, parameters for your uh, things, but to be really uh, quick and fast on this one, you can just activate a ground, for example, like that here. Um, put it like at 35 here and, and send back the, um, that perfect. And so then I can send this uh, this uh, 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 quick uh, render to uh, to uh, Anais by saving it over there. Is the and saving the render to my desktop here, just to uh, gi give uh, her some feedback on the on the design and uh, how it's uh, how it's going on. If I'm ready with uh, my uh, my final design, what I can do. And this is the main purpose of uh, Substance Painter, is to export the texture um, and to use them in other software. So basically here, I am, I am in my export window and I can ch uh, change uh, output templates. And what you can see, you can use Sketchfab if you want to put your uh, um, model uh, on the web. You can use Adobe Dimension, uh, also GLTF that uh, that will work fine on uh, on a web uh, viewer. Uh, if you are um, using a blender, you can put a blender output. Keyshot will also uh, work well with Keyshot 9 and you have a direct import with Keyshot. So by clicking over there, you can directly link your uh, all your materials in Keyshot 9 uh, just by uh, drag and dropping the, the the, the folder, so that's pretty uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so today we will see substance uh, um, Adobe Dimension over there. 
And as we can see, it will export five maps over there in um, 4K, but we can change it to 8K if we want. And we will export it to the desktop and click on export and um, Painter will generate all the data that we need uh, to, uh, to put everything on um, Adobe Dimension. So I, I will launch Adobe Dimension now. And what you, you will see is that it's super easy to um, make the link be between uh, Adobe Dimension and Substance Painter. Basically, you can just fit the canvas like that. And this is the folder that uh, Painter uh, uh, just exports. And you just need to drag and drop on the center of, of your uh, scene, uh, the OBJ that uh, Painter uh, generated for us. So then you can center the mesh like that. And you can rotate like that pretty well. In case you don't know, uh, Adobe Dimension, it's a staging and rendering tool that uh, is provided. Uh, I think right now it's available in the Creative Cloud offer. And uh, yeah, so you can do some renders and uh, composition within it. Yes, exactly. So you can even uh, put like a interactive um, past racing um, view like that so you will have more accurate shadows and and a lighting here and then you can go uh, into maybe adobe stock and search for uh, living room ta uh, table backgrounds for example like this one select like a one that you would like to use for example um, this one looks good so uh, uh, I already downloaded some of them, so let's drag and drop them into my uh, project over there. And this is the one that I selected here. So I can drag and drop them directly on, on my uh, viewport in dimension. And I can put like a match image and it will use AI to try to match the, the lighting conditions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I can align the grid uh, with like that. Okay, I can also change the, my camera field of view if I want. So like more straight field of view like that. And uh, what I can do, I can change also my uh, environment um, if I'm not really happy with what uh, uh, dimension generated. Perfect, the intensity of the lighting also like that. And over here, I have like a really uh, a back shot for like a communication, for example, uh, that I can um, uh, save and render like for uh, for uh, with a better quality by uh, going over there, clicking on render. You can select PNG or a PDS. The Photoshop format will output you some mask and uh, more information, and you can click on uh, render and dimension will start to render your uh, your uh, image with, uh, with uh, a great quality um, pass tracing uh, um, method. So that's pretty much uh, the process of, of uh, texturing. As you can see, we are really, um, um, we link the, the two uh, side of, of the design. With the CMF side, you can really choose the material that you want and the design intention. And then within the same suites, you can really apply the, the, the design and create the design uh, within Substance Painter uh, and render it within uh, Substance Dimension or any other software. 
uh, we are an agnostic uh, about um, the render that you, you want to use. Uh, and also, as you can see, um, uh, Ronan Mahon always work with the Unreal Engine and it's working also super fine uh, with the Substance Suite. So when my uh, render will be ready, uh, we will be able to uh, post it on any, um, any platform. Um, Vincent, is, is well, there some question? Is there some questions? Yeah, actually, the first, thank you. That that was great. Uh, we actually are going to start a Q and A, uh, indeed, because we have some question on the on, on the chat. Uh, so let's start. This you can stop sharing your screen. Um, yes, Guillaume. So the first question, uh, it has been answered in the chat, but I think it's still good to, to answer uh, about the, the, the Ronan Mahon video. Uh, which, software, which software were used to render it? I can answer it in case it was an Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine 4. So it's, uh, yeah, so it uh, allows uh, to, to work in real time and, uh, and to, to work uh, way faster. Um, another one, which is for, for you and Ace, and maybe a bit for you as well, Nico. Um, how does one become a CMF artist? It's almost philosophical. <laughs> so, Anaïs, if you want to start. Uh, for my side, I have done uh, design school. Uh, I was uh, specialized in, in fashion, and uh, I have done my internship in automotive industry and after that I, I great do you have something to add nicolas no, no i think that that's perfect I, I i'm very much interested in in in, in how designers will sort of a cross breed into um into a material um, expertise on one side and 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 the, the mastery of 3d tools on the other to be able to experiment a lot faster and a lot deeper into what your artist yeah exactly Magic. Um, another question about workflow. Uh, could you please tell us how to use a material adjusted in Alchemist uh, within Substance Designer? Uh, so, if I don't know, Guillaume, if you want to answer or uh, Substance, the SBSAR is the format where where you can tweak the parameters and. Uh, that you can put in into all our plugins into 3ds max maya modo uh, cinema 4d uh, unreal engine unity lumberyard i mean a lot of variety of of uh, plugin you can find all the plugin in our uh, page uh, on the substance website uh, so this is the sbsar and you can plug this sbs BS is a version that is completely open um, that where you can tweak the graph directly so uh, all the information uh, within the the material all the the mathematical operation all the algorithms etc and it's not that complex it's really visual and this uh, sbs you can download them uh, with uh, substance uh, uh, on substance source uh, and uh, then you can open them only into substance designer so to make a comparison, it will it would be more like a PDS, like in Photoshop, a Photoshop file will be like more or less like a SBS uh, for uh, for designer, where you can open it and see all the layers, all the all the information about uh, about uh, the material. Hmm. Um, to to explain it, but yeah, I think the, uh, you made it work. Well. Like uh, the SBS is the recipe in the. SBSR is like the final, final result that you can share anywhere. SBSR, sorry. Yeah, and that is more light and and uh, and compact. Exactly. Um, so Roland Mahan, I don't know if you answered, but uh, um, some people were curious about the amount of polygon there were in that mesh. Uh, the speaker. I don't know exactly, but um, uh, to, uh, to it wasn't uh, that uh, that much polygons. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't something crazy. And does displacement in Painter move vertices, or is it using some black magic? It is moving uh, vertices. Yeah. 
And actually, you can export the displaced version, which is extremely uh, useful in most of the, the usage. So you can almost sculpt right now, uh, in some cases, uh, within Substance Painter and export the final result to, to be used uh, somewhere else. Uh, um, this one oh, is for you, Anais. Is there any good resources out there to learn how to make mood boards from scratch? And I think, uh, Nicolas, you can give your 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 thought as well. Um, from my side, a good mood board is something very logic with the, the, the shape, with the color, with the symbolic, and when everything is is adapted, you can have a good mood board. So you just have to learn and to create lot of mood board and try it again and again and once it's work so just have to work <laughs> i think there is adobe color that, that people can go because the, there is lots of color palette and sometimes they like to to present some collections of color depending of, of the season and nicolas do you uh, do you have some secrets you want to share with us yeah, yes, absolutely. I, I try to add a few stuff from what Anais just mentioned, but <clears throat> my, the goal of a mood board is to tell a story. So uh, whatever tools that you, you utilize is, is the goal is to convey an idea or, or something. And, um, and, um, and right now creating mood board is, um, is an aggregation of several tools from 2D to 3D. Um, uh, um, just a bunch of examples that we experience in, in the substance source team uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in specifications of materials that have to cre be created is a combination of, of, uh, of existing materials, uh, references um, uh, combined with 2D images and, 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 and this can grow into, um, into, into conveying a, a message and, and to create a good mood board is about um, showing a target that everybody um, or everyone that would be outside um, a, a team would easily understand. And so right now we're moving in a process in, 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 in specification um, um, and, and mood boarding in 3D um, the much we can with the tools we have. Cool. And we have uh, Swanim Verma uh, in, in the chat who worked with us and who said that Behance as well and uh, Pinterest, of course, are, are good ways to say. Hey, Swanim. So do we have another question? Yes. Um, Guillaume, can we use HDR in Adobe Dimension? Uh, yes. Yes, we can uh, use HDR uh, format into Adobe Dimension. Uh, just drag and drop it into the uh, environment um, um, little um, um, input. And uh, so it's on the on the right uh, side of uh, of uh, the, the dimension interface when you click on environment, and then you can rotate or uh, change the exposure of this uh, HDR um, uh, environment. So then it will change the lighting condition. Basically. Awesome. Perfect. Um, another one for you, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, how can you create masks? For Unreal Engine, so you can mix additional materials through extra UV channels. Mm. I think it has to be uh, done independently. Yeah? So mm. you, you create mask um, to to uh, to import them into a blueprint material in into uh, Unreal Engine. I, I, I guess I don't have all the details, okay. but I guess it's do a multi-material. Uh, yeah. Okay, so so basically, it's uh, it will be more based on blueprint uh, uh, nodal work, uh, and there is there is a ton of tutorial on that uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, on the web, uh, and yeah, it's pretty easy. So you you can uh, you can drag it, import some bitmaps, for example. Uh, in uh, in Unreal Engine, you can also in Painter when you right click on the mask you created on Painter, uh, you can right click on it and it it will say export mask as bitmap. So you can only export one mask without uh, going to the the export uh, window. So this is a, a great solution to uh, um, to make uh, like uh, going forth and, and to import and export from Substance Painter to uh, to uh, to um, 
uh, Unreal Engine. And then you import this bitmap mask into Unreal Engine. And I think with like a mix uh, color uh, within uh, within um, Unreal Engine, you 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 can like blend materials or uh, maps uh, together. And awesome. it, the, there there might be like a, also a mix a mix shader uh, possible, but they need to match uh, like uh, the same textures. I mean, if you have like a clear coat and like a skin material, if they don't match. They won't be uh, possible to uh, mix them together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Um, uh, one which is about, uh, let's say, uh, almost legal limitation on what can be exported to be sold on the digital marketplace. So first, before to answer to this, we have a ULA that I invite you to to look at because it can it it, it can be updated. But generally. Um, all the details are here, but what you have to make sure is you cannot sell, of course, the materials as is, uh, and you cannot sell the source of the mass substance source material. And of course, you have to bring; it has to be part of a project. And, um, it has to; it cannot be sold as is. So it has you have to bring a creative value to what you sell. Except this, you can of course use uh, substance source material in a commercial project. Yes, uh, go to, once again uh, go to the ULA to get all the details. Another question: What are your steps? Your step in analyzing a material to create it from scratch? Hmm. Guillaume, you want this one? Um, yeah. So normally, uh, it depends if it's a made uh, 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 man-made material, so like something that the human did, like a, something like a glass with super designed uh, patterns, etc., or if it's like a natural material. Uh, but the first thing, uh, you need to look the material from really far. If you have like a photo reference, you need to put it really small on your, uh, on your, um, on your screen and to analyze the big shapes of it and to draw on your mind the big shape. And you start from that. I always start with like a tile generator uh, something really simple uh, and start to draft some rough shape of it. Uh, all, I always, I tend, I, I tend to start with the height map all the time uh, to have like the big volumes of the, of the material, depending if the, the material has like big volumes. And uh, from, from the height map then, well, the normal, and I extrapolate uh, from this main pattern, uh, the the roughness, the base color, and uh, and the metallic, if there is some metallic on it. So look from far the material. Look also what you're doing from far. Compare, and the more you're getting on the material and you're precising the design, uh, bring like the reference image uh, like to like a, a, a medium size. And at the end, when you're doing like the final touch, you can zoom on it or uh, take some more, more references of the material from like a microscopic uh, point of view to add like the fine, final grain and the final details like scratches, etc. But always begin from like a very far and draft point of view. Yeah, really good uh, advice is because uh, sometimes it's uh... People are really in a hurry and they want go to go get into the details uh, really quickly, uh, and they they, for, they forgot that. So it looks quite distant from from close, but when you go farther, it doesn't work. So it's it's really important to respect all these steps. I think I'm just looking quickly. Uh, it was the last question. I'm just checking the chat. Um, uh, no, I think uh, I, there is another one, I think, from the primaries about the CMF process. This is really interesting to see people like you. For um, this one is a bit, uh, there was one, sorry, the premise, but it's uh, about games, so it would be a, a full topic. Um, uh, but uh, for the materials, it can depend on the art direction. So how we do for games, the, the process is the same, but you would adapt depending on the art di direction. So I think we, we are done. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to thank uh, all of you guys for, 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 for being here and for 
the, getting uh, giving some insights about how to use substance source materials and uh, substance tools to in a CMF um, context. So thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone in the chat. Uh, thanks also Pidu and Casimir to for animating the chat. The next um, live stream will be next week. Uh, if you are a substance designer user, don't miss it. Uh, we are with Jem uh, Tescan, who is a substance designer uh, expert, and uh, he will share um, some of uh, his trick. And especially, he has made the last substance designer uh, splash screen. So he, he will he will give uh, some uh, some uh, some explanation how he achieved it and how he used substance designer to actually. Do some sculpting and uh, modeling uh, within Substance Designer. So thanks again, and uh, see you next week.